Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today we're going to make a box full of puppies. Who wouldn't love a box full of puppies? We're going to use several products, some that are new, some that are not. This one is the Party Puppy Party, sorry, um, Slimline Stamp Set and the Coordinating Dies. And then we have this other Slimline Set. It's called the Celebration Borders Set. And then one of my old favorites, this is the wide box card die set. This will make a slimline sized box card. We're going to start out by cutting two panels for the box card and we're going to trim off the, um, the flaps except for the very back flap. So we're going to take these over to my guillotine trimmer and I'm going to fold over the parts that I want to cut off and line those up with the edge of the blade. Just by folding them on the score lines, it makes it really easy to line them up for where you wanna cut them off. We're gonna keep this back panel, and normally I would say don't fold that over because you want it to stay upright. But in this case, we're going to put cardstock on both the front and the back, and that'll reinforce it so that fold mark fold won't cause any problems. So now we're going to have a box card that doesn't have any flaps that you need to fold down to see it all. And to decorate our flaps, we're going to take these larger pieces. We've got the long, wider rectangle and the, and the short one. And we're going to take this confetti or sprinkles die that's going to die cut out of our cardstock. And we're going to cut a couple of panels. Actually, I think I ended up doing three panels in order to create enough. Although the panel that goes on the front of the tall piece you wouldn't really need to put the sprinkles in because they're going to be below the line of sight. So I guess you really only need to do the sprinkles on three, sh uh, three strips. Now we're going to line up this, these two dies on the cardstock. We'll need two of the short squares and one of the long rectangles. And we're going to put those on our box. So now we're going to crease the rest of the score lines on both panels here and I also cut some bridges to go on the inside. I sometimes call them shelves because I'm going to put things on my little shelves inside these boxes and we're going to adhere these for the decorative portion. So we're going to adhere one of these large panels on the front and one on the back or one on the outside and one on the inside of the box however you want to think about that. Just going to quickly adhere those and then we will um, try to remember to put these on the right side. <laughs> so when I assemble these, since both of these pieces for the box frame are cut with the same die, you need to flip one over so that you will have the flap in the right spot. I like to have the right side of the die cut be the one that's showing on the front on the shorter panel in this case, and I will have the wrong side facing the front of the box on the tall piece. It's going to be covered for the most part with our decorative panels, and you'll want it to have a nice finished look on the back also. So now we're going to adhere these pieces together. We'll take our little flap. Oh, before that, I'm not done decorating. We need to make our frosting, because we're going to make some drippy frosting to go on this cake. So I've taken a candied apple, mustard seed, and um, we're gonna stir things up a little bit. We're gonna use some peacock feathers. I have probably two thirds of a sheet of white cardstock, and I'm going to create a rainbow stripes across the whole thing. Taking three colors to go ahead and create our multicolor rainbow, because where these overlap, they create new colors. We've got our blue, red, yellow, and then when you mix them, you get a purple, a yellow, and a, excuse me, a purple, an orange, and a green where they overlap. And I'm doing more than one band of these rainbows, but we're going to cut these down, and it looks really loud right now. I understand that, but it will soften up, and we're going to use small or narrow strips of this. So it isn't going to be quite so, like I said, loud. These are nice bold colors though. Going to use some pearlized water and spritz that over the entire panel before we do any of the die cutting. And I'll make sure that's nice and dry before it finishes. 
Now we're going to take our drippy frosting and we're going to die cut that three times and I'm going to keep the negatives also. That's what happens there. So I die cut and then trim, die cut and then trim. So we end up with six strips of this frosting. Now I'm going to adhere these to the front box panel and do you see what I'm doing wrong here? How long do you think it takes me to figure out I'm covering my sprinkles with my frosting because they are supposed to be on the bottom of the cake or what's the point of putting them on there? <laughs> so I go ahead and adhere my little short flap. I've got it stick, stuck on there and I'm trying to get my alignment just perfect. And then I realize, oh my gosh, I'm covering my sprinkles. So off camera, I go ahead and fix this since I can't peel them off. I made a new panel, glued them on correctly, and now we're going to make sure we're going to glue this on the back of the card. No, I'm sorry, we're doing it on the side, the other side of the card, and um, just going to fold that over and trim off the excess, which is what I did for all of the panels. And then we're going to add it to the top of the inside panel. So I will again put some glue on the back of this and adhere it to the front. And then we only have one more place that we're going to put this rainbow frosting. I don't know about you, but rainbows are still one of my favorite things. Rainbows make me happy. I love to see rainbows on all kinds of things. So it's just a trend that I'm going to continue using till they don't make me happy anymore. We'll add one more layer of frosting here to this bridge. And so I am going to adhere that between the crease lines for the two side flaps. Just going to adhere that down. And in retrospect, I probably should have made this bridge out of white since our layers of our cake have all been white. And to fix that, I'm just going to trim out the extra craft colored cardstock on this panel just quickly going to trim it out with my scissors. Super easy, doesn't have to be super pretty, it works. And I'm going to start adhering my layers together. We'll take our front panel of the box and we'll adhere that to the flap on the back panel. Let that glue set. I like to use liquid glue because in my experience, the score line or score pal tape and the red liner tape, those kinds of double-sided adhesive, they don't hold up over the long run. I just pulled out and reorganized my cards the other day and um, my cards that my box cards that I used dry adhesive on actually came apart at the seam and I had to re-adhere them. So liquid glue forever for me. <laughs> We're lining up the flaps on one end of these bridges, adhering them to the side panel, what will be the side of the box. And then I fold them over completely, add some glue to the flaps on the other side and close the box over it. And we'll add a little liquid glue to our little flap on the other side and let that set. <clears throat> And there is our assembled box. Next, we're going to add our puppies. I had already colored these with Copic markers and made them, some of them look like dogs we've had in the past and just tried to create a large variety of dogs on this strip. Now, this is a strip that will fit on a slimline card. So it is around eight, eight and a quarter inches long. And the inside of our box is only about seven inches. So I decided to trim off the last two puppies and I'm fussy cutting out this bone that overlaps the third and fourth, excuse me, the, the puppy next to it. And I'm just going to trim this as close as I can without um, destroying the bone. <laughs> and then we're going to trim off the side of this puppy because he has a funny bone shape cut and it will fit nicely on our shelf. We'll just nudge it over to the very far right and it'll look 
just fine. You'll not even really notice that that puppy is not complete. We'll add the other two puppies to the front of this cake. It looks like the puppies are jumping out of your cake, which I am certain there are lots of kiddos and actually, frankly, lots of adults who would love to have a puppy cake. We're going to add some fun sentiments that are punny from this stamp set. It's time to potty, as in paw, not, yeah, anyway. <laughs> and then we wish you a yappy birthday. I am, however, going to pull in another product for the birthday component. We're going to use some embossing, just some clear embossing powder, because I like the raised shiny finished detail that embossing powder adds. And I had used a pigment ink, the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is my go-to for crisp black sentiments. Love that ink. Just going to let that heat set and get all nice and shiny. And then there are coordinating dies for all of these sentiment parts. I die cut those quickly and we're going to trim off the birthday part. We want to save the yappy part. We might, I might use that other section, the birthday part, on another card. Then I took this scripty birthday die and I die cut it from some hologram specialty card stock. I wanted this to stand out and this is also sized for a slimline card. So I trimmed off those extra curly cues from each side of the word and that'll make it fit on the inside of our card just perfectly. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom parts of the letters and we'll set that on our closest bridge, the one that has our rainbow frosting on it. Just going to adhere that, make sure that it's pretty straight on our shelf and then I'll fold it down and press a little more to get that to adhere nicely. Oh, maybe I didn't. Oh, I had missed a piece that I needed to use my pokey tool to get that out of the loop of the B. Then we're going to add our smaller sentiment pieces. We'll add the we wish you a yappy to the top of the back panel so that you can read the sentiment down the front of the card. And I did not center these completely. You sure could, but I decided to add a balloon to the front also. For the last part of our sentiment for the front of the card, I'm going to use some acrylic, or excuse me, acetate picks. These are just scraps of acetate, the firmer kind that comes in packaging or trim off from when you do some laminating with your laminating machine. Um, there's all kinds of places that you can get a hold of acetate. It isn't even necessarily just packaging for stamping products. We all get packaging that is the acetate variety. Next, I'm going to adhere the string from the stamp set to the balloon from the stamp set. These are both from the Puppy Party stamp set. And we'll adhere that next to our sentiment on that back panel. Now I do end up moving that balloon down so this will fit within a slimline envelope from the slimline envelope builder die set. We're going to adhere this single puppy that is also from that stamp set to the back of our card, he gets a little party hat. I could have put party hats on the other puppies too. There are three party hats in the stamp set. We're going to add a second balloon to the back of our card. Now this is where you would add your own personal sentiment um, or your own message to your recipient. And then there's this tiny little cupcake. We're gonna add that to the back too. So cute. I had a lot of fun coloring these puppies and the, the accessories that come with them. There's also a party blower too on this stamp set. Lots of fun. I hope you enjoyed this card. I really enjoyed making it. I can't wait to give it to some lucky recipient. I also made a yellow one. I was thinking lemon cake here. I love a good lemon cake. I had done it all in yellows and almost, and it's almost exactly like my rainbow one, except the colors changed. I used some gold specialty card stock to die cut the word birthday. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, now would be a great time to do that. 
If you're interested in any of the supplies that I use for this video or for these projects, check that description box below. It will always be in the description box, a link list. And if you leave me a comment, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.